today is sir, Dr. Ajit Mulletseri, sir. Sir is an interventional cardiologist from Madras Medical Mission, sir. Thank you, sir, for joining us today in CSI TV studio, sir. Sir has done a lot of pioneering work in STEMI and uh, also part of the team with who has rolled out the hub and spoke model, I believe, in the country. Sir, is this model replicable across the country? How do you see it going forward, sir? Well, just to, to tell you, the model was validated in a small initial program at Kauai and uh, we ran it as a pilot, following which we scaled it up in Tamil Nadu into a hub and spoke. And what was the most important thing of the hub and spoke was it was inclusive. That you had private hospitals, entire one city, like Madras Medical Mission, you had a public hospital in entire one city like Stanley Medical College, you had a Christian Medical College, Velour, which is a rural tertiary referral, and Kauai Medical Center tied to private. And we had 40 spokes. And these 40 spokes were, you know, in multiple primary health centers, nursing homes, everything. And what we proved in one year of 2,420 patients, which has been published in various journals, including the BMJ, the Heart, and, and uh, maybe the one year outcomes in another major journal soon, is that we could replicate a model of healthcare delivery through a hub and spoke model which is applicable not only in Tamil Nadu but can be scaled into any part of India and can also be scaled in any developing country in the world. So the question you ask me is can it be scaled? The answer is yes. Can it be scaled to geography? The answer is yes. Can it be scaled to even geographies which are developed? The answer is yes. And I think in the scenario like India currently, the traveling time to the spoke center or probably to the tertiary care center is big, traffic problem, lots of other problems. Patients do not understand it's a cardiac pain at all. So for all those things, I think it is very, very relevant that we approach this kind of a model to especially Indian population. Well, to be honest, the system of care, what we have provided in the model, is basically starts from the diagnosis of STEM. That means an EKG, which is transmittable and can be, you know, used by technology to move for hand holding into a hub center. The second thing is we recognize the importance of physicians who should be the primary mode of delivery of good medical treatment. And finally, what we need to do is create a system where patients don't land up in an eye hospital or a gynec hospital with chest pain, but land up in a cardiac hospital. And more importantly, the thrombolysis, once given effectively and early, is a good reperfusion therapy. And, you know, in Tamil Nadu STEMI, we found an 80 minute difference from patients scaling smaller hospitals, which was 140 minutes, to a bigger hospital, which was 220 minutes. Okay. Now, 80 minutes, just advantage of going to a smaller hospital out benefits any mode of treatment advantage. For example, if it's more than 60 minutes, pharmacological therapy with thrombolytic is superior to primary DCA. So clearly, I think that the benefit of early reperfusion is more important than the type of reperfusion. Correct. And coming to thrombolysis, do you differentiate between the available thrombolytics in country or you yeah. will put them together? Well, the first question is, is there, is there science behind this? The GUSTO trial showed that there was a 1% mortality difference between TPA and streptokinase. You had 10 deaths down to 2 strokes more, to put the bottom line down. But when we started comparing TPA with other thrombolytics like retiplase or vitrinectoplase, we found that they were similar in terms of many of the three styles like the inject and so many trials showed the same. So, what we now need to do is basically either have a large trial, which is difficult to run except in this country because thrombolytic is not available in the or do a, a study in India in small with a surrogate endpoint, which we are running in Tamil Nadu right now, uh, which will show that uh, a, 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 a quick acting thrombolytic like tenetoplase or retiplase is superior than giving the traditional thrombolytic. One thing is clear. The short-acting, quick delivery thrombolytics third generation is easier for physicians to get. That makes it life simpler for the physician to treat. I think if we need to improve the mortality of this disease, pharmacoinvasive approach and pre-hospital thrombolysis are the two key pillars based on which we should move. 
then only we could uh, absolutely and in fact most of our publications we were the 12 publications in the last five years and almost all major journals all over the world is basically the pharma invasive approach sure. now pre-hospital fibrinolysis is a legal issue because in the ambulance there is no doctor and i don't think that right now we are ready for that so i think that part we need to change but outside india sir pre hospital thrombolysis it happened in the fastmi trial in france but remember the samu ambulance has a french doctor in the ambulance okay it is not delivered by 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 the by the by the technical level people so i think unless there is a legal framework which allows okay. a technician to give the medicine on the ambulance even if it is be be a telemedicine ecg diagnosis by a doctor at distance Uh, unless the legal framework comes in, I don't think pre-hospital so analysis in the ambulance will work. So as of now, so we are away from that. Probably we will not be able to take a pre-hospital thrombolysis. In well, we have created, we are running a new study now in uh, in Tamil Nadu, which we hope to start next year. Is that we empower the small hospital, which is really not an ambulance, okay. nor is it a big hospital, okay. but who has an ICU and a defibrillator, okay. to start the treatment and call for the ambulance. Okay. So by the time the ambulance comes in, your second generation or third so generation. Do, do these people will need some specific training? Yes. yes, I think the key is training doctors, nurses, technical staff, and also administrators in the whole thing because administrators sometimes don't understand the importance of acute medicine. So I think that needs to come into. So what will be your three key messages to the physicians who are mostly the first point of contact of MI patients? First, it is their responsibility. Let me put it straight. to diagnose step and to treat them appropriately number two the fear of using thrombolysis should go away and that can come with only two ways one is your training as a physician to diagnose step and attending cmes and getting done and two is the the better thrombolytic coming on board so that they are more comfortable in it and three not to hold the patient in your hospital for too long because the problems of thrombolytics can happen either immediately which can be treated usually because they are in the icu or a little later when either they were shifted out of icu or in the room where it's better that you shift to a bigger hospital where they can manage the patient better than in your smaller hospital so that's my three messages so thank you sir thanks for joining us today and thanks for all the great work you have been doing for management of stemming thank you sir. thank you Importantly, that thrombolysis, once given effectively and early, is a good reperfusion therapy. And you know, in Tamil Nadu, we found an 80-minute difference.